Perhaps the most incredible thing about our universe is how big it is. It's so big that it's almost inconceivable. But perhaps that's also the biggest disappointment. Imagine if today we could use our powerful telescopes to find another Earth-like planet in a galaxy that's suitable for human life. It would take centuries to reach it. It is impossible for any individual to leave this galaxy. We are all familiar with the fact that the Earth is located within the Milky Way galaxy, and the nearest galaxy to our own is the Andromeda galaxy about 2.5 light years from Earth. So, using a spacecraft, traveling at the average speed of around 28,000 kilometers per hour, it would take us 94.5 billion years to get there. Even if we were able to travel at light speed, it would still take about 2.5 billion years. This is truly disappointing. What's the point of discovering all these planets if we can't travel to them? But if there was a way to travel beyond the galaxy, a way to travel across millions of light years in a matter of months, then things would get interesting. These shortcuts are wormholes. My favorite space movie of all time is Interstellar. In the movie, it's shown that when Cooper and his crew set off from Earth in search of other inhabitable planets, they travel to other galaxies. When they travel from their galaxy to other galaxies, they travel through wormholes in minutes. This is the part of the movie where Cooper's team enters the wormhole. According to the movie, the wormhole was discovered by NASA near the orbit of Saturn. But the most interesting thing about it is that this idea of wormholes isn't science fiction. In fact, it's based on actual science. What are wormholes and how can they be used? Before we dive into the details of wormholes, we need to go back to Einstein's theory of relativity. When Albert Einstein wrote his theory of relativity, it was in the form of a set of equations known as Einstein's field equations. These equations were first published on 25th November 1915 in the Proceedings of the Prussian Academy of Science in Berlin, Germany. The total number of these field equations is 10. 10 nonlinear partial differential equations. In summary, they can only be represented by one equation. Don't worry, due to the complexity of this one equation, the mathematical details will not be discussed in this video. You can see the steps of this one equation if you expand it. Even if you're a math fan, you'll be taken aback when you see this. Basically, these equations explain how matter and energy affect the way space-time moves. Albert Einstein said that to understand it, you need to think of a big mesh. When objects are placed on this mesh, it deforms due to the weight of the objects. The space-time mesh deforms in the same manner, bending with the weight of large planets and stars. The more gravity there is on a planetary object, the more it'll bend around it. What's interesting is that Albert Einstein didn't solve his field equations. He just found a partial solution in a particular case. In 1916, Carl Schwarzschild was the first to solve these field equations. He figured out exactly how much space-time curves bend, and to what extent, for one ball of mass. Schwarzschild's solution was the starting point for scientists to understand the idea of singularity. What would happen if this mass becomes infinitely dense? The idea of black holes was based on the idea that space-time would curve around it so much that it would cut off from everything else in the universe. It was first shown that black holes exist about a hundred years ago. But it wasn't until 2019 that scientists were able to actually take a picture of a black hole for the first time. What I'm trying to say is that one of the answers to these field equations is that black holes exist. Wormholes are another answer to these field equations. You might be wondering how you can solve one equation to get two different solutions. You're probably familiar with the quadratic equation, which you'll have learned in school. This quadratic equation has two solutions, x equals two and x equals three. Both of these statements are correct. If you look at Einstein's field equations, they are much more complex. In fact, there are many possible solutions to these field equations. Wormhole is one of them. Einstein-Rosen bridge is the scientific name for the wormhole solution. It's named after Albert Einstein and Nathan Rosen, 
who worked together and came up with this idea in 1935, so it is very easy to understand wormholes. Basically, it's a shortcut that links two points in space-time. Take a look at this paper. There are two points on this paper. A and B. If you want to take the shortest path from A to B, which path can you take? The straight line connecting A and B. There can be no shorter path in 2D, except the straight line connecting the two points. But if this 2D mesh is bent into 3D, new paths will appear. I have aligned A and B, so that if you want to select the shortest path from A to B, then this distance of millimeters between A and B can be used directly. If I insert a pen here between these two points, then I have literally found a shortcut to get from point A to point B, which is much shorter than this path. Wormholes do the same thing. In our three-dimensional universe, we know that the shortest path from the Milky Way galaxy to the Andromeda galaxy is 2.5 billion light years. If our 3D space is curved or bent in the 4D space, then it is possible to find a shorter and better shortcut. It is very hard for us to think about the fourth dimension because we are living in three dimensions. But to a certain degree, you can better understand it if you compare 2D to 3D. Let's take another example. This is a map of the world. If you wanted to fly to New Delhi from New York, which way would be the quickest? You'd say a straight line connecting New York to New Delhi with the flight flying over Africa. But this isn't the shortest way, because you're thinking in two dimensions. The shortest way to get to New Delhi would be through Greenland, Iceland passing through Sweden and Finland. It looks like a long flight to the north, but on three dimensions, it's clear that this is the shortest flight. John Wheeler, in the year 1957, in his paper on Einstein-Rosen Bridge, compared it to a similar analogy. Let's say we have an apple, and let's say an insect, a worm, is eating it. They reach from one side to the other of the apple while eating it, or they travel through the middle of the apple. This will cause the worm to travel shorter distances. In other words, the worm has taken a shortcut in the space-time continuum. This shortcut was called a wormhole by Wheeler. This is where the term wormhole comes from. You can find a lot of wormhole diagrams online. I did the same thing with the paper. I connected two points through a hole. Here, imagine that we have a mesh of space-time. On this mesh, we have an object with an extremely strong gravitational force. The force is so strong that the space-time is bent so much that it pierces through the other side of the mesh. The space-time is folded on itself. This wormhole has been used as a shortcut to travel between different galaxies. However, in all of these visualizations, there is a problem with the dimensions. We are trying to represent the wormhole in 2D, but as I mentioned, wormholes work in 3D to 4D. So, in reality, if there is a wormhole, it will look like a sphere. There's a really cool website that lets you imagine what a wormhole would look like if it was actually proven to exist. It's like a ball-like shape, and as you walk through it, everything around you will be curved. If you look back, you'll see the Earth moving away from you, and everything will look like a circle. This is why the wormhole in the movie Interstellar is so realistic. It's important to note that wormholes are theoretical. Wormholes are a solution to Einstein's field equations. Scientists have tried to imagine wormholes in movies, and there have been many theories about them. But so far, no one has actually seen one. Scientists don't know if wormholes actually exist, but if they do, they will also act as time machines. Imagine being able to travel a million light years in just a few minutes. This means that you can travel there even before the speed of light. If the speed of light didn't travel there, then you've essentially jumped from one point in time to the next. Now, it's a different question. Do wormholes exist? Can humans travel through them? There are a number of practical issues to consider if wormholes are real. The first one is how do you create a wormhole? In order to do this, we will need a massive amount of gravity. So, where do we find that massive amount of gravity? 
a black hole. According to Einstein and his assistant Rosen, black holes can only have a gravitational force strong enough to open these wormhole tunnels. Everything is drawn to a black hole. But what's on the other end of that tunnel? If there's a black hole at the end of that tunnel, then you won't be able to get out. You'll be trapped inside the tunnel. In this case, the wormhole won't be a tunnel to get from one point to another. It'll be a trap. There should be something that is the opposite of the black hole in every way. Something that is as strong as a black hole but works the opposite way. Something that instead of pulling things towards itself, it pulls things away from itself so that you can create an exit point. This is where the white holes come in. White holes are a concept that has been theoretically proven using Einstein's field equations. In addition to the black hole and wormhole, white holes are another answer to Einstein's field equations. What are white holes? Just as white is the inverse of black, a white hole is the inverse of a black hole in every sense of the word. Just as light cannot escape a black hole, light cannot enter a white hole. Light can only be emitted from it. This means that a white hole will be very bright and white. The term white hole was first coined by Russian theoretical physicist Igor Novikov in 1964. According to scientists, a white hole is basically a time reversal of a black hole. Like the event horizon of a black hole is a point of no return. Once it is crossed, nothing can escape from it. Similarly, the event horizon of a white hole is a boundary of no admission. Nothing can go beyond that point. The objects in the white hole can come out and interact with the universe, but it won't be able to go back in. It's all part of Einstein's theory of relativity, but nobody knows exactly how a white hole will form in reality. Black holes are created by the collapse of a star onto itself. But what is the opposite of a black hole? Is there a white hole? This is a question that scientists are still grappling with. According to some theories, when the Big Bang occurred and the universe was created, at that point in time, everything had to come out of a giant white hole. There is another theory based on the idea of Stephen Hawking. According to Stephen Hawking, a black hole will eventually collapse when radiation continues to escape from it. Black holes are not eternal. They evaporate away at an increasing rate until they vanish in a gigantic explosion. Black holes are not eternal. They evaporate away at an increasing rate until they vanish in a gigantic explosion. When a black hole collapses and dies, what happens to all the information and matter in it? The fundamental law of quantum mechanics, known as the no-hiding theorem, states that information cannot be lost. This means that even if any information were to disappear from a system, it would still exist somewhere else in the universe. In theory, if all of this matter and information is being sucked into the black hole, it will be spat out after the black hole dies, and this is most likely happening through the white hole. Based on this theory, many scientists believe that a white hole forms after a black hole dies. But until now, we don't have much information about how a black hole actually dies. Some scientists think that a white hole can't exist because it's against the rules of thermodynamics. As you probably learned in school, the second law states that the entropy of any system can't be reduced. Let's say we're dealing with a paper. We tear it up, and after that, the entropy just keeps going up. We can't just put it back together the same way. Just like a paper shredder shredding paper increases entropy, a black hole shreds everything in its path. Black holes swallow entire planets and stars, leaving only radiation behind. This increases the entropy of the universe. If you want to think about it in the opposite way, with the entropy going down, then this isn't possible. According to this logic, white holes can't exist. Some scientists think that not only white holes exist, but that in 2006 they were actually seen. On June 14, 2006, 
a space satellite called Neil Garrell Swift Observatory captured an astronomical event. The event was a white light explosion that suddenly vanished. A gamma ray burst is a very bright explosion of light. Most gamma ray bursts occur when a large star is swallowed up by a black hole. In this case, there was no evidence for a star, so it was thought to be a white hole observation. We haven't seen such an event since, and that's why white holes are still just a theoretical idea. It's important to note that black holes were also a theoretical idea at one point, but then one day they were practically proven, so it's possible that the same thing could happen with white holes in the future. The same can be said for wormholes, folks. It's possible that we'll be able to prove their existence in the future. But even if we can prove their existence, scientists still have their doubts about whether or not humans will be able to travel through them. The most exciting news about wormholes' existence came in 2015, when scientists in a laboratory created a magnetic wormhole. Until now, we have only talked about wormholes in terms of gravity. But if we think about magnetic forces, scientists have already been able to create wormholes. What does that mean? Well, there are two poles to a magnet, the North Pole and the South Pole. We know that these two poles are always connected. Even if you split a magnet, both the North and South Poles will still be connected. Scientists use special materials to create wormholes by separating the poles of magnets and creating an invisible space between them. Basically, one magnet's magnetic field went in one side of the wormhole and came out the other. You can see it in action right here. On the left-hand side of the image, you can see a device that was made by the scientists to separate the two poles. This device acts like a wormhole for the magnetic field, and we can see it with our eyes. On the right-hand side, you can see the magnetic fields. On one side of the picture, you can see that one of the poles is separated from the other and is at a distance. Like in the universe, a wormhole works by bending the curvature of space-time. In this case, the wormhole is bending the magnetic field to create this magnetic wormhole. A high-temperature superconducting material called the yttrium-barium copper oxide was used. The material was stored in a liquid nitrogen bath to perform the experiment. Even if wormholes don't exist in the future, that doesn't mean we can't find other ways to go faster than the speed of light. Theoretically, there are a few solutions. One of them is called Alcubierre Drive. It was first proposed in 1994 by theoretical physicist Miguel Alcubierre. The idea is that there will be a spaceship that can travel faster than light. But how will it do that? The answer is that the curvature of space-time in front of the spacecraft will contract, and the curvature in space-time in the back will expand. Alcubierre drive is a theoretical solution to Einstein's field equation. It will be interesting to see what other solutions are proposed to these field equations, and what practical applications we can draw from them. For now, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more amazing content.